Good morning. Hi, I'm Frank Messina, and I'd like to welcome you to the April 18, 2023 meeting of the Chatham Historical Commission. Before we start, we have a couple of announcements. Please note this meeting is being, will, is being recorded and will be available shortly hereafter for a scheduled and on-demand viewing on any smartphone or any tablet device. If anybody else is recording the meeting, please notify the chairman. Okay, none? Pursuant to Governor Baker's July 16, 2020 signing of an act relative to extending certain provisions of the COVID-19 measures during the state of emergency, including the, ex including the extension of the March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. Annie, is this the right one? We got a hiccup here. Yeah, they don't have the internet. It's okay. Just Governor Healy through 2025. All right. Yeah. And so is this is this the correct one that I'm reading? No, that's an older one. That's not the correct one. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. We gotta be legal. I don't have last, the agenda from last meeting. That was correct. No, that is an older one as well. All we need to do is say Governor Healy. Yeah, that's only through 2025. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Governor Healy through March 29th, 2025. All right, give me, you're going to have to get closer or louder. Well, let me read it. Thank you. Uh, pursuant, continuing, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, pursuant to Governor Healy's March 29, 2023, signing of an act of 2023, extending certain provision and measures adopted during the state of emergency, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law 30A20, until March 31st, 2025, this meeting of the Chatham Historical Commission is being conducted in person and via remote participation. Every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. I reminded that persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress can, call, can, can, can do so by calling the phone number 508-945-4410 conference ID 286-770-932. You can take this. Despite our best efforts, we may not, we may not be able to provide for real-time access. We will post the record of this meeting on the town's website as soon as possible. Gee, I'm not getting as old as I thought I was. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, the first action we have is the roll call. We currently have uh, three members present and I think four members in, uh, in the virtual space. Okay, uh, Bob Lear. Present, sir. Thank you. Steve Burlingame. Steve is absent. Ben Smolokzinski. He's on, I see. Ben. Got to turn the mute off. Ben, you drive me nuts. Stephanie Hamilton. Here. Uh, no, Thank you, Ben. Camera. I got it. Sure. Jane Moffitt. Here. Thank you. Don Aikman. Don's in sunny Florida. Sandy Porter, also in Florida. Janet Tennyson. Here. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, and the chair is here, so we have a quorum and we could proceed. We yes. could go down to Florida and have the meeting and have more people. There we could. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the uh, next item on the agenda is the minutes of April 4th, 2023, and the first thing now, obviously we've got to correct the Governor Baker's comments there. All right, any other comments, questions? Yes. I'd like to. I'll, may, I'll move that we accept the minutes as corrected from April 4th, 2023. Second. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, we will now do a roll call on the minutes, unless there's any other comments. 
Um, okay, well, absent last well, meeting well. was Jane Moffitt, Sandy, and Steve. So, uh, Bob Lear? Yes. Ben? Can he vote? Yes, Ben? He came in late last time. Steph? Yes. Jane, you were absent, and Janet? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Did I get a yes from you, Ben? Ben, we're going to have to improve that connection. How can I get rid of this? Um, You're driving the people in the control room crazy. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, so Ben is, we've lost the connection with Ben for information, so Ben didn't vote on the minutes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, two applications on our agenda and a couple of old business items where it's more or less a report before, with myself and Ryan Christenberry for the members of the public and the audience. This is Ryan Chris, Christenberry, who is the principal planner? Correct. Thank you very much. And she has joined us to help us out on a couple of things. All right, the first application is uh, 23015, 23 Woodcarver Knoll. Uh, let me find it here. This is to be heard in accordance with Chapter 158. And just for information purposes, on the property, there is no Form B on the property. It is not listed in the National Register District. Uh, there's an application. Oh, Mr. Litchfield will go through. Mr. Litchfield, I'd just like to make one minor correction and for a clarification. And I know somewhere in your narrative you talk about it not. The fact that it's not, it's a no in our form does not mean that it's not, nas not historically significant. It just means at the time we did the survey, we were deciding we only had so much money to spend and we were not going to do a if it was a low priority. And I agree with you, but in fact, just for information, we just recently now have obtained some f funding and we're going to be redoing the, the surveys, again, to look at those houses, you know, which did, was low, which, you know, another 20 years later, may be another thing, and I know interest of you, or interest in the community, we're going to be looking at other, like uh, these cottage communities and, and other things in the town to see how they fit. Sorry to interrupt your presentation, but just thought you'd be interested. Uh, now I'll be quiet and let you present. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bill Litchfield here on behalf of the applicant, Julie Moore, who through a trust owns the property at 23 Woodcarver. And I appreciate your, your note or your suggestion that there is going to be a thorough survey of truly historic significant houses. My comment in the application was simply to indicate that it's my understanding from the homeowner that when prior renovations were done to the house, that this commission found it not to be historic under one of the three criteria right. uh, that we use. And as you know, those three criteria are whether the house is listed on a national or state register, which as you correctly say it is not, whether it is located within any historic district, which it is not. And the third one is the one under which theoretically we are before you, we're more than 75 years old. First of all, I, I, as I told uh, staff, I apologized for the inability for me to be there on Friday. I was not in Florida with the bulk of the members. <laughs> Uh, but I was not able uh, to appear. Uh, the house itself, as you know, we're not entirely sure when it was built. The assessors say 1935. It does right. not appear on any old maps, and I've looked. The first time it appears on a plan at the Registry of Deeds is 1968. Uh, it's older than that, plainly. I tend to think it may be post-war rather than 1935, but it, it may well be more than 75 years old. However, insofar as we can tell, it is not associated with one or more historical persons or events or the cultural, economic, or social, or political history of the town. And it does not, to my untrained eye, and you're the people who make the decision, it does not, as far as I can tell, possess architectural value or significance in terms of the period, style, method of construction, 
or association with an historically prominent architect or builder, either by itself or in conjunction with a group of buildings or structures. It's been renovated extensively over yes. the years. Uh, I'm not aware of any historic materials which would be destroyed by the addition, the small addition on the east side uh, and by the construction uh, of a garage and uh, guest quarters, which is what we're proposing to do today. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Well, thank you very much. I, I agree with you, and there was no, no problem. I think Janet and I enjoyed the view. It's such a beautiful spot looking out at the uh, Ospreys and uh, Oyster Pond, so uh, uh, it was not a problem. Uh, and one of the contractors was there, and he gave us a good explanation of what was going on, so that was fine. It was, it was okay. Um, I tend to agree with you. I remember when this house, I think this house had a fire at one time, and, and that was the renovations. And, and, um, and I believe in my own personal opinion, although we don't have any jurisdiction, if we don't find it historically significant, I think the changes are consistent with the property in the neighborhood. So I, I personally think they're fine. I don't know, go around the commission, see where we are. I agree. Agree? Janet? Yeah, I agree. In fact, I think it'll look, actually look better <laughs> once this is changed. Okay. And it doesn't seem to interfere with Jerry Evans' view either from the, the neighbor's view. So. I have no problem. Good. Uh, Vice Chair, Mr. Lear? No problem. I agree with you. Okay. Uh, that was no problem? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. No uh, problem. Ben? I agree with you. I guess we still, oh, I still don't have Ben. We have Steve, though. S Stephanie? Yes. Thank you. Jane? I'm okay with it. Good. Janet? Yes. And the chair votes yes. And I see Mr. Burlingham just joined us, so we'll have to. Uh, I'll abstain. You'll abstain from this one. Did you take his name tag away? No. Oh, okay, Stay. fine. You know, we kept moving you over. <laughs> All right, so we, we seem to have a situation where there's no problem. And now we need a motion, and I'll make it just to keep things moving along. Uh, I move the Chatham Historical Commission finds the building structure located at 43 Woodcarver Knoll is not historical significant is not historically significant because it does not meet any of the definitional criteria in 158.2 A, B, or C of the bylaw. De therefore, the commission does not impose a demolition delay. In if I second, could, Mr. Chairman, I think it's 23, not 43. Just. 23 Woodcar. Oh, 23. Thank you very Second. much. Okay. Second. Okay. Any other comments or questions from the public? For or against? Okay. We'll do a roll call. Bob Lear? Yes, sir. I'm in favor. Stephanie? Yes. Jane? Yes. Janet? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. I got that right. Son of a gun. Oh, we're going to set a record here. Yeah, good. So. <laughs> good. Just to note, uh, Steve Burlingame has joined us. Okay. The next item on the agenda is application 230169 79 Cross Street. And uh, this is to be heard in accordance with Chapter 158, Demolition Delay Bylaw. Just for clarification, and I'm sure the applicant will go through it, this, uh, this application was before us relatively recently, about maybe nine months ago or something like that? Uh, short of about six. Six months? And unfortunately, it was uh, turned down by the zoning board, and I appreciate the fact that they've come back to us with a revised application. Uh, and... Uh, Having said that, this, there is a Form B on this property. In fact, this property was a, granted a uh, preservation award some years ago, but is not listed on the National Register. So having said that, uh, Ted, we want to introduce yourself formally? Uh, my name is Sam Strybert. I'm the architect on the project, and I represent the applicant uh, who's here, Allison Coleman. Um, and... Uh, uh, 
uh, just to recap a, a, a little bit uh, with a little more detail, um, when we came before you, because uh, this is uh, a seasonal rental, um, it was deemed a commercial property, and as such was not uh, app, uh, uh, not uh, avail avail available for a special permit. Uh, it had to have a variance for the various um, uh, uh, encroachments that we had envisioned for the uh, enlargement of the back portion of the property, um, of, of the building. And uh, so we made our application, um, and the zoning board did not feel we had substantial uh, 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 hardship, hardship to grant us a variance. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we withdrew the project from the zoning board. <clears throat> and what the next step was is to see whether we could accomplish our program within the zoning setbacks so that no encroachment over a uh, uh, a uh, over a setback line would be required, and then whatever that was would be able to be built as right as of right, and so that's the way we were approaching it. But we have a little bit of a a, a, a quirk to it. Uh, we have two parts of the building. On the west is a bathroom and a bedroom that goes about three feet over the setback line. <laughs> and so what we're going to do is preserve that and build it into the new project oh. uh, uh, as a uh, pre-existing pre non-conforming structure, which we, we can repair and because uh, the foundation, we, we will find out, we, we don't know how good the foundation is, and w those kinds of things will have yeah, to the be. The house is originally is 1830 or something like that, right? 1828 is, 1828? The, is yeah. the date that's been given by Form B for the front portion of the, of the building that's most, um, uh, most typically uh, Greek revival uh, in style. And it's a very good example of, of that. The roof has e even a slight little bow to it. Yes, it does. So, uh, so we've, we've been able to do that. So we're going to preserve on the east side, we're going to preserve the little vestibule and make that part of the entry into that unit. So we're very happy to do that. And because we're building less, in order to support our program, we are actually reducing the coverage, the zoning coverage. But we, we still have to go before the Zoning Board of Appeals because um, it's a non-conforming lot and we're extending a, a non-conforming structure uh, in, on a non-conforming lot. So we, we will be available. Uh, able to get a special permit for that. Uh, when do you so. go before zoning? So we have to go before. Do you know when you're going? Uh, um, May, May 4th. 4th. May 4th? Yeah. Thank you. OK. So um, uh, I can take you through the plan here. And I want to show if you will go back a couple of steps to the, oh, right there. These are two dormers. Which uh, we will need to be re will need need to be removed so that we can build this dormer and this enlarged dormer. So if you go to the next, so uh, that is this dormer makes that room just that much more useful, and taking off this roof and dormer which were. Uh, uh, the, the dormer and the dormer on the other side uh, was added uh, um, probably in the 1940s, possibly uh, pre, pre war edition. Yeah. So it's very minimal, and you have to step down and you have to walk through a bedroom to get to the kitchen. Uh, so 
uh, we were really happy to be able to, if you could give me a little, what, what's happened up here? I've lost the, the top of my bill. Oh, there it goes. Um, so the, this dormer now makes that, that unit uh, very preferable. And, and then this is our preserved little vestibule that we will add on to the end. And off the back here, the porch has been removed, so a big porch part of the coverage will be taken care of. The next, next slide. So th this, this is rather, l looks like the whole thing's being demolished, but <laughs> actually just this porch and these roofs up here and up to, up to that yellow line, which uh, uh, will we'll have to be, but the walls, what walls we can keep, we will keep because we want a plate height that matches this plate height here ah. across. And so on top of that plate, we will build a, a, a steeper roof. So th th this, this is the plate height here. We will put it out over here and then go up higher to, in order to have headroom on the second floor. And, and now the, the roof pitches all match each other and yeah. are, are not these sort of crippled orphan roofs. Yeah, it is, it is quite an interesting uh, hodgepodge. So, uh, and the next, next slide just shows the, uh, so we introduced a porch here uh, this is an existing stairway, but we enter the unit directly here rather than going into that, that part. Um, so uh, that's, it, it, it's, it's a lot simpler and yeah. less, less extensive. Well, thank you very much. I've, so, so I'm ready for your questions. It was questions. interesting. Uh, do you know how long it's been in the family? Uh, Bought the house in. You need to come. Yeah, all right. I need to come up. I'm sorry. No. My grandmother bought the house in the late 1960s. Okay. And it's been used as um, summer rental uh, from around World War, a uh, little before World War II, um, and my grandmother continued that um, through the 70s and. To today. Could you just introduce yourself for me? Oh, yes. Sorry. I'm Allison Coleman, and uh, my family has owned the house. My grandmother, then my father, now me. Well, you know, the reason I'm, I'm commenting it or it was it's interesting that we know, or you know, and we know, so much of the history of the house in terms of when, you know, like you have in your drawings, this was added in 1917, you know, yeah. and we know a lot of what was My going on. My mother has done really extensive deed research on yes, the house. And, I know that. And um, that yeah. was part of the, yeah. the 2009 historic um, award that the house received. Yes. Was from that research. Very nice. Well, I think the most important thing from my personal view before we get other, is you know, preserving probably the most important thing is that the, the Greek Revival front of the house is just staying exactly where it is from a streetscape. So having said that, why don't we see any members? Steph? I think it, look, I think it actually looks better. Good. Changed. Steve? Was it uh, necessity, breeds, whatever, but I, they probably did you a favor. I think you have a much better structure now than you had previously. It's going to work better, um, and I am going to enthusiastically support it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, uh, Janet. I agree. I think it's a very good um, change and would appro will approve. Good. May I ask a question? Surely. Is there any chance of this being uh, year-round housing? Well, there's a possibility my mother may move into it, but it's. Uh, it's, the intention is to continue using it and its historic use. I'm um, asking because Chatham is yeah. so yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, at this point, the idea is to keep it as a summer rental, though there is, you know, my family, my grandmother lived in the house. My mother may move into the house. 
Um, so we certainly see it as a family resource, and it could be that at some point in the future, family members do live there full full time. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Lear. I agree with Mr. Burlingame. We need to note that down. Thank you. Uh, then are you? We completely lost him. Okay, Jane. I agree with what's been said already. I, I think Very it's good. an improvement. I've, I've been in the, been in upstairs, and it's such a hodgepodge, and this is really an improvement. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, it's time for a, a motion. I think we have a, a consensus here. Uh, if there are no other members of the public or the, in the online who would like to give a comment for or against the application. Yes. Just introduce yourself. My name is Harriet Prout. I live on Shattuck Place. I'm right across the street from this home, house or rental. And I would like to see it stay as a summer rental. It's a nice balance to the other numerous rentals that are in town. And there's always been like retired individuals that come in, and I'm out gardening. They always come in to visit and talk to me. There's young couples with a baby that, that probably can't afford something more than that. And, and I've been in the house, and I think it's a really great low-cost summer housing for Chatham. And they've been great owners and great neighbors, and um, I'm totally in favor of them. Well, thank you very much. That You're speech welcome. you have to save for the zoning board. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Well, well done. We just don't have authority in that area. I know there was a question. So, all right, I'm going to make a motion if there's no other comments. I move that the Historical Commission find the structure at 79 Cross Street is not a sto No, sorry about that. I got it wrong. Okay. Repeat. I move the Chatham Historical Commission find the building structure at 79 Cross Street is historically significant because in whole and part is 75 years old or more, is, uh, oh, okay, is associated with one historical, one or more historical person events or a cultural, economic, social, or political history of the town of Chatham. And item two in C possesses architectural value of significance in the period style and method of construction associated with the uh, uh, either by a prominent architect or itself in conjunction with a group of building and or structures. We have a second? A second. Thank you. All right. I messed that one up, but let's go. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's go roll call. Bob? Yes. Steve? Yes. Steph? Yes. Jane? Yes. Janet? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Having said that, part two. Thank you. The Chatham Historical Commission also finds the proposed work to be done dated, what's the date of your drawing? 15 March 2023. Uh, Will not materially will not materially diminish the historical significance of the structure. Therefore, the commission does not impose a demolition delay. Second, please. Second. Ah, no, well, that was a tie. <laughs> Steph. All right. Uh, have a second. Any other comments? Okay. Roll call. Mr. Lear. Yes. Steve. Yes. There you go. Steph. Yes. Jane. Yes. Janet? Yes. And the chair votes. Now you can go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good luck. Great. Appreciate the effort you're doing this to maintain and save that house. Okay. Moving along, guys. Be a quick one. We have um, a quick, couple of quick things to discuss and talk about. Oh, one, one other new business item uh, is the administrative uh, review and ratification. What I did is move them up into new business because we used to have it in, in the, the chairman's report, but really is an action. And so what we have is the administrative review uh, 
and ratification, which needs to be ratif ratified by the commission. The address is 101 Forest Beach Road. Uh, myself and Janet independently looked at the house and both agreed that the, the structure and the mod modest changes that, that they're making, you know, uh, meet the criteria of administrative uh, review and approval. So uh, I'd need a motion to approve that. I move that we ratify the determination. Thank you very much. Is there a second? A second. Second. Very good. Okay. Any other comments? No questions? Bob? Yes. Steve? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Jane? Yes. Janet? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Okay. So uh, you can let Christina know that that's, the, or yourself. I hope Christina's not. Christina in Florida, too? <laughs> the whole world. All right. Uh, we have some old business items, which I'd like to just to briefly discuss and give a report. Uh, under the first item is the townwide archaeological survey and report and form Ds. Uh, we're actually at a point, finally, where the contract efforts are proceeding with PAL. And Ryan and myself will be meeting with uh, Holly Herbster, who's the uh, archaeologist. And I believe she is the principal uh, owner of PAL. I'm not sure it's what the P stand for. Maybe it's Plymouth Archaeological Lab or something like that. Uh, but uh, they will start be starting the efforts and to update the townwide archaeological survey we did in 2009. Uh, with Don Aikman, I think, was chairman at the time. And uh, I don't know anyone we could say on that. It'll probably take about a month or two. Ryan, what, what was the, the work finish, the, the date for finishing? Do you know? Uh, so we kick off on Monday the 24th, and we have until October 31st for the, the consultant to complete the work, but I believe she expects to be done sooner than that. Very good. Well, the process is, in addition to field work and reaffirming, like, specifically the archaeological dig at the uh, uh, Nickerson Family Association in the Atwood, uh, you know, to just take a quick run around town and look at where previous uh, uh, known archaeological parts were and to just confirm them and then update the form these and the uh, efforts. And I think it's important, you know, there's a lot of digging going on in Chatham. It's nice to know what we're losing and what's there. And most important that I would hope that with the completion of the update and the form D's, if you will, D's and David, uh, we might be able to put forward a application to Mass Historic to then uh, initiate an application for uh, National Register eligibility of the Nickerson dig, which would be really kind of neat. I know in independent conversations I had with Craig Cartier, the archaeologist who did the dig, and with Holly uh, at PAL, they think it might meet the criteria. So maybe we're on a National Register ride between the South Chatham, but it would be nice to, to have it rec recognized nationally on the list. Uh, the other activity, uh, the form E's, okay, my, my fault, I have been in uh, somewhat distant contact with a contractor who may want to do the form E's, okay. I haven't had a chance to get back to him. I've been kind of busy with other things, distracted with life. Uh, but this was someone who was recommended by Holly Herbst to, you know, because Craig didn't want to do the work, you know, with, with his new company. And, I'm looking at Steve, Mr. Burlingame, who has really been leading the effort on the, this is the form ease on the archaeological survey of the cemeteries. I think the very positive thing here is the current cemetery commission is aggressively looking into the care and update of the, of the cemeteries in town. So we, we have a joint effort here together. Uh, the next item would be uh, an update to the 2015 survey plan. And that's what I was referring to, to Mr. Uh, Attorney Litchfield. You know, it was done in 2015. The way we categorize that, you know, is there a Form B? And then we, in, a, in the booklet, which you, you did have, I don't know if you haven't looked at a while, it, each home is listed as a high, medium, low, or a no. In other words, when they did the survey in 2015, they wanted to know which homes really were worth spending the money on. And um, we want to take another look at that. 
uh, at least I feel we should, and we have a contract which uh, Brian is helping with, and which uh, Eric Dre, our consultant, will update the report. Uh, in addition, and we haven't met with him yet, but we knew we should set something up, because personally what I'd like him to look at, in addition to, well, I'll give a good example. We had that 127 Stage Harbor Road. Mm -hmm. There was no Form B. And then we looked at the house. We says, well, my goodness. You know, there is some parts of this house which are historic and et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we could disagree on it, but still there was no documentation of the house. And then we found out there was a really interesting history between it was a carriage house for the, for the mansion, if you will. You know, so that kind of stuff. You got to remember, part of our task here is not just approving or denying, you know, changes to homes, but also to document as much as we can. And that's, that's really what it's all about, the, the so-called form A, B, Cs, and Ds. The other thing I'd like Eric to take a look at, and we can talk about with Ryan, is look at some of the things in town that we haven't looked at in a while. The, uh, the cottage communities, you know, we have these large swaths of land with cottages from the 20s and the 30s, and, you know, it's probably going to set off a a firestorm, but we want to take a look at it. You know, is there anything worthy uh, in terms of designation of those those particular items? And um, and then the other thing Eric felt we should take a look at is in, in I think it was in I don't know ninety something they did the form A's and the form A's are the area forms, uh, but they haven't been updated. You know, we updated it when we went did the South Chatham, and so he's going to take a look at that. That's enough. I'll keep Brian busy. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Modern Way Theater, do you know anything? Have you heard anything? It's on hold, huh? The, I do not have an update on that one. Yeah, I just wonder if anything's happened, if it's gone back to zoning or the planning board. Yeah. Orange is, uh, Ryan, is obviously it's in the HBDC. We don't have authority, but we, before the, the building was sold, the theater and the uh, the residence, the Washington Taylor residence, is very historic. And the previous owner, not the previous owner, the, the new owner, wanted to apply for uh, state and federal money. If you have a commercial property, and if you're in an historic property, which is eligible to be listed in the National Register, you get a 20% tax credit on the state and 20% on the federal. That's big money. And in order to get that, you have to have it listed. So we were involved in assisting the listing. But unfortunately, the whole project is kind of on hold and with the zoning board. So we'll see what happened with that. Uh, lastly, uh, well, before lastly, uh, when Christina gets back, we'll take another look at the uh, Historical Commission application. She's done about 90% of it. We just have to, uh, in conjunction with Ryan, find a simple way to make the make everybody understand what we mean by gross floor, gross floor area you know that always gets us wrapped around the axle and uh, and Ryan in his spare time which is never uh, is going to look into uh, the amendments of the demolition delay bylaw for neglect is that something you can you stay into something like that? Uh, well so I've started doing some research on other communities and Orleans I think is the model that that you're interested in. Um, so I was going to reach out to Steph and just schedule a time to talk and get some more background information from you. Yeah. I think the thing with Orleans was it would apply only to national register properties. It, it was very weak. It was, and it was very weak. And we wanted to broaden it. At least we had talked about it, Steph and I. You know, not just national register properties. We have about 21 national register properties in town. And quite honestly, there is an application. If you think the, uh, the brick, the... Uh, the one in the uh, cross street from the Mayflower, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that that building, I can't, I think it's called the Brick Building. Yeah, it's That's block, a nasty brick, brick, brick block. Brick block. Mm -hmm. That is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. And talk about maintenance. That thing is really, over the years, has been a lot of, a lot of problems with it. And the owner has, you know, had a problem, financial problems. So anyway, that that's what we're kind of looking at, you know, to find not only the National Register properties, but maybe properties in historic districts. You know, we're not going to do it town-wide. That's too much of a reach. But we can, my favorite expression, get our nose under the tent, you know, with this, these summer historic properties. And I think your or Katie's comment about 
changing the demolition delay bylaw is probably an easier way to do it than starting from scratch with a whole new bylaw. So I think that'll work. All right, I'll be quiet. Uh, that's all I have, unless somebody has anything. Yes, Steve. I have a question, well, not a question, but a concern. And I'm not so sure that we have any jurisdiction because we're not talking about a dwelling. But I was disturbed when um, there's a large house just finishing construction on the road that goes to Eastwood Ho um, near the old um, Christopher Ryder house. Um, and when they were doing the excavation, they determined that they were in um, the early American uh, midden. Um, a midden for those who don't know is it was an Indian dump, we'll call it. If you had an Indian uh, or an early American uh, Native American uh, village or setting, um, they had a place where they got rid of all the things that they or discarded, whether it was fish bones or um, meat bones, um, uh, shellfish shells, things of that nature. And historically, they're very, very interesting. There's one in Osprey, Florida, and they happened to excavate it accidentally to build an underground garage or something. And when they did, um, they recognized there are all these layers, and they, they can identify these layers in their age by what's in them. And uh, learn a great deal about uh, the eating habits and a lot of the other lifestyle habits of those people who lived there eight or 10,000 years ago. And as far as I know, we have nothing, we have no jurisdiction or opportunity to review those things because, you know, excavated for a foundation, lost and gone forever. Um, it, you know, it's, it, I, I take to spend, um, $4 million for a house site on the water and find out, oops, I've been to an, an old midden and um, I'm going to be restricted somehow. But at the same time, whether it's, whether it's identification that you talked about um, or, or something to that extent. So at least we're talking about knowing where they are if, if we come across them identifying them and maybe making some initial uh, review or examination of just how extensive it is. That's but it's, it's, a, it's a huge historic site um, in, in many respects. It's underground. We, we don't have any knowledge of it until we get into it. But once we do, I think it's, if we don't document it somehow, we're, we're missing something. And I don't know if it's a, under our jurisdiction, but when you talk, uh, about identifying some land situations. I think that's one of the things that we should give some thought to. Um, well, that's exactly what the archaeological survey did. Okay, you know, we it, it is accessible to you guys. Uh, there's a redacted surf, uh, basis and uh, document and an unredacted document. Now, when we did it the last time, she identified, you know, certain areas where there were mounds or uh, what, what, what are they called? Yeah. Middens. M -I -D -D -E -N. Yeah. Yeah. And for instance, the uh, the Marconi property had a lot of them because be th that location, th that location, right, is called when the when it was settled by the Indians. You know, they they, they that was a perfect spot. You know, they go down into uh, Riders Cove and and fish, and and then they would have uh, encampments there. And so there were a lot of them there. Uh, we got into that when the town was all of a sudden thinking about you know tearing up the whole property, but. You're right, our, our authority is somewhat limited. We do have our authority, because if you read the chapter 158, it talks about uh, not only structures 75 years old, but you know, the issue of, of uh, you know, uh, historical sites, you know, uh, architectural sites or, or other kind of sites. So there is a, there's a stretch. The 158, the words currently written, is not very strong. It could be made stronger. But certainly, like when um, when a body is discovered, you know that kind of thing. You know, we I've been involved over the years. We're in here where we have to bring in the, in the Indian tribe. I forget what it's called, the local tribe, you know, and that kind of stuff. And it's interesting. Most of the time, they just want you to put it back in the ground where it is, except if it's going to be in the foundation, stuff like that. But let's see where we go with the Holly and this architectural survey and. I'm sure she could she could give us some uh, assistance to maybe 
updating or expanding, you know, uh, our authority to an update to 158. But I would hope that you would then bring two other younger members to the commission to help on this. <laughs> because, you know, we, we've, we've been pretty active here the last 10 years, and, uh, you know, it's... I'm not saying I'm going anywhere, but, you know... Yeah. I was just going to say, what, what are you talking about here? Yeah, right, exactly. Okay, what, I did something? I wasn't talking no, into the microphone? Me. Oh, you. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else? Anybody want to make a motion? To adjourn? Move we adjourn. I'll second. Second? I'll second. Okay. Boy, 11.15, wreck it. All right, Mr. Lear? I think you already adjourned. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, we lost everybody. Okay. Uh, Mr. Burlingame? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Jane? Jane's yes. not there. Yes, Jane. Good. Thank you. No. Yes. Janet? Yes. And the chair votes yes. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.